And this time he's got his head stuck. Uh, Come on. Lesson learnt. That's never happened before, has it? Good morning. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Tim's Cotswold Farm. I'm going to bring you weekly videos of what we're doing here on our farm in the Cotswolds. So I hope you enjoy. Morning ritual. Spread this one. Dad's gone off to try and get this sheep round because it had its head stuck now. Oh. It's obviously upgraded itself from brambles and things to wire. All tucking in. Daneway pub over there. Right. Thought we'd tie it together, make it easier to just drag down the bank for now. Don't know where Dad's gone. Do a little tail inspection. All looking pretty good actually going into the winter. This one's a bit messy, but otherwise pretty good. What are you doing? Hello, I know. I haven't got any mints for you today. No. Yep, yeah. and then this one's the one that's always getting stuck. New roof, still looking very sexy. Sorry, I'm probably nicking now. Okay, so we bought a new hedge cutter last year and a separate video I'll do a walk around, tell you what we like, what we don't like, how we're getting on with it. But about four or five weeks ago on the radio, BBC Radio Gloucestershire, we're talking about how people are concerned farmers are killing birds and small mammals because they keep cutting hedges. Now, cutting things back, cutting things down actually increases growth, it increases thickness, which means the habitat and the wildlife corridors that these hedges are creating for the mammals are actually becoming safer. So there's less predators able to actually get into the canopy. And if you imagine you've got your hedge, as all the wisps are coming out, if farmers are cutting that, or in some cases, which I know we do here and other farmers do, you increase the height of the hedge each year, you're encouraging new growth, but you're also making those hedges higher. And it's just such a moronic thing to say that they're simply killing off birds for doing so. The other thing is Joel Public can cut their hedges 365 days a year if they want to. Whereas farmers are obviously restricted by a cutting season. So 1st of September through to the end of Feb, 1st of March, they then have to stop. And they're very strict on that. You can have your payments cut um, and there's other sort of penalties that are incurred because of it. Now, my big grievance, and this is my slight moan today, the local parish council, eh, probably nine, ten months ago, said that they didn't condone or wish for farmers to cut hedges. They should be left for wilding. Fine. But what they've done now is allow all of their allotment hedges to be cut, not just with the extra height put on. No, they've actually cut them right back down. Don't get me wrong. The guy that did it, know him well. He's had a very nice piece of hedge cutting and I'll show you a video of it now. So you see what I mean? Nice hedge cutting, but why the hypocrisy? Why have no issue with it being cut when it benefits yourself, but having such an issue when talking about other people? So that was my grievance. Why say you don't support it when quite clearly you do when it suits yourselves? And two, why make a false statement that it harms birds and kills small mammals when actually it encourages growth and thickness and it's a good thing for the hedge? Anyway, moan over, let's go back farming. If any farmers are watching, just whilst I'm walking past this, when we lift the drill out of the ground, we lose all our pressure. So typically we're running about 100, 150. Soon as we lift that drill up, he's going down to 50. Now this is wound right out and we've got about, uh, I think it's a three quarter inch free flow return running into the back of the tractor. And I'll show you that in a second. So if anyone's got any ideas, I've heard other drills do it, but often they're trailed. So it makes less of a difference. But obviously we put the bout markers out and the same thing happens. So you'd think he's not getting enough oil, but we've had TH Whites out, they've had a look and they think the flow from the tractor is absolutely fine. We've got the flow ramped right up and we can't physically put more oil through this thing and it's still not working. So any ideas would be great. This is our free flow return and it's threaded straight back into the back of the tractor. So there should be no reason why the drill is struggling. And actually up in the screen, 
we've turned the rate up pretty much as much as we can and he actually doesn't want any more oil going through. He considers himself free. So yeah, if anyone knows the answer, let me know. Just letting Dad out of the orchard. Obviously it's turned off for anyone safety conscious. Beautiful view this afternoon. I've got some timber just coming down off the fields. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use the Milwaukee and I'm just gonna repair this one for the time being. And then I'll turn my attention to these others at a later point. A slight update, so I've realized that this one in the center is actually far better. So I'm just gonna try and brace this. This is the fate of this one's probably sealed and I'd actually be better off just stripping it all down and using the timber in the other two boxes. So I'm just around the back of the buildings. A tree surgeons approached us and asked whether we've got any yard space free. So what we're thinking is he can put all of his timber out here where the sheep are. Uh, the sheep, by the way, just in case you're interested, the person didn't come and see them. They decided that actually they don't want them. So they're going to go up to the market on Thursday. But what we're thinking is he also wants to bring a uh, firewood processor and he also wants to plank some timber. So what I'm thinking, if I come in here, we could theoretically clear this stuff because if you look on the Forestry Commission website, um, things that are actually this thin don't count as trees. So you can just take them out. And then if I come over here, I'm thinking this that we've got here goes through into the main barn. So I spoke about this before. We take this down and he can actually access this piece and he can process all his firewood out here so all the sawdust doesn't go everywhere. So just an idea, but ideally, hopefully in the future, this is all coming down and we can extend out here and build a new farmyard. Oh, V8 fender just got by. Probably can't see it, but she sounded sweet. So it's Thursday morning. Because no one wants these sheep, I'm gonna take them straight up to the market. Because we've only got these four, it meant that I could just bring them in the shed and it would make loading so much easier this morning as opposed to having to go out the field, pen them, get them in the back of the trailer and then obviously head up. So that'd probably take about 30 minutes. Look at that, two minutes and I was able to get the sheep in the back of the trailer. So I'm going to put the clips on, put the lights in and then head up. Should take about 30 minutes to get there. The sheep are loaded up in the trailer. I'm on private property so it's alright to record going to pull up to one of the units now what I'll probably do is swing round on my good side it's arrived at Sarasas Cow Market you can't really see me because it's so dark I've just dropped the rams off at the market now I'm going to head home. They're always so helpful here as well. All you have to do is jump out, give them the paperwork, help them usher those sheep into the holding pens, and then they take everything from there. Slight change of plan this morning. Glass bowl that we've got on the fuel filter decided to drop itself on the floor. Went to White's, and they've got one, but he was about 150 odd quid. So we're going to see if Spaldings or Sparex or whoever have got one that's a lot cheaper, that's just a sort of run of the mill one. Obviously, Guards are back on now. Just waiting for that and then we can go hedge cutting. What do people use to protect the side of their hedge cut tractor? I'd be interested to know. Filter. Dad's just doing a couple of light juices around here just in case it drops off. Obviously fuel all over the road, not ideal. Being stuck in a field which isn't ours, even worse. So he's just doing the laurel hedge. He always takes good pride on all the hedges right outside our gate. So he goes ultra slow, make sure they're nice and neat. But whilst we're here, I also wanted to touch on this stuff that's arrived. So we've moved the fertilizer around. Uh, we've got our keep off signs. We've also got our warning signs to say that it's a hazard. What you'll often see is there are terrorism provisions, uh, fire, police and ambulance provisions. And we usually have a board up with all the numbers to say, if in an emergency, contact the counter-terrorism unit on this number. If any of you remember the Beirut situation where all of that fertilizer exploded, I was approached by a district councillor which said a local docks near here, Sharpness Docks, was going to be used as a way of dropping off all the fertiliser coming down from Liverpool on the boat and then it would be brought down and then taken into Sharpness Docks. So he wanted us as a farmer to say actually no, we are familiar with just how large the explosion would be and it's not like Beirut where it was on the edge of a dock. Sharpness is surrounded by homes and families so any explosion of that even a tenth of the magnitude would kill tens if not hundreds of people. So we were asked to just comment on that. 
One thing I also wanted to just raise walking around, it's really interesting. You think, so this is a 600 kg bag, but only 33.5% of it is actually the nitrogen. The rest is carrying agent. And what carrying agent is, is effectively once you've got the, the nitrogen that's available to the crop, the rest is what we would use to, if you like, encase it so that we can spread it through our fertilizer spreader. So this has the potential to be thrown about 36 meters. It's a granular product, which means it's not smooth as a prill. I'll just show you inside the bag. Slight update, sheep took them to the market, as you would have seen, they made 110 pounds a head. So very happy with that, which is why I'm gonna go down and sort some other sheep out, those Cotswolds on the other side, and see which other sheep I can take to market. Because obviously the market's pretty good at the moment. So I was just driving up the lane, I noticed this. A bale's either come off someone's trailer or it was on the front of a telehandler and they've ended up driving it straight into our hedge. What I can't understand is this hedge has actually now got a massive hole in it. It did look like this. So they must have hit it with a fair amount of force and I cannot think that a haylage bale would come off and have the weight to cause this much damage to the hedge. Bit of a morning mystery really. Quick update on project weight block. Gone through our first brush, got the second one on. Just painted the one side with this rust preventing bitumen paint and then we'll flip them over and do the other side and then when we put them all back together we'll then paint them in the color of our choice on the top and on the sides so i want to talk about russia any macro event creates volatility in the market and that volatility is the oxygen that investment banks use to trade because those margins are where you can make your money so why is putin doing this well principally he is concerned he's not getting enough uh, respect and trust still being given to him and this is a bit of a bang the chest situation to try and still prove that they are the powerful Russia because people are losing faith in him. The second thing is he doesn't want Ukraine to join NATO. NATO and the European Union will not ha have or will not welcome a member who's already got existing conflicts which aren't sorted out because otherwise you'd just be buying serious firepower. The other reason that Putin wants to take over the Ukraine is because he fears they've been independent since 91 from the USSR and he can't control them. Putin's fear is that with a large set of NATO countries bordering his, he's gonna have restricted access to the Black Sea. In 2014, he was already able to annex some of the Crimea and as part of that, you know, the conflict has really been ongoing ever since for the last seven, eight years. Ukraine is the number one country in Europe for its agricultural value. With Russia and Ukraine at war, it means that there's gonna be a massive deficit in wheat. It also means because they ship uh, sunflower oil and corn, that those other two commodities are going to go up in price as well. We've been offered a futures price in May, which is quite attractive. So we've sold a lot of our wheat ahead of time. All the algorithms in the background, the Bloomberg, the JP Morgan analysts are saying there's gonna be a shortage and the cost of producing fertilizer is gonna be even more expensive. So that's almost gonna double down on that problem. So that's it for another week on Tim's Cotswood Farm. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, get notification of my videos every week, and please give it a thumbs up. I'm just starting out on this channel, and to be able to have your support is just so invaluable. So I'm gonna leave you with an outro of Dad cutting the hedge outside the farm, which I took with the drone. So I hope you enjoy, and I'll see you next week. Yes, oh. Looking at the corner of your eyes So I pick my heart up off the floor Move my feet closer to yours Catch my breath and I say I'm the one you're looking for Baby, come on, come on Dance a little dance Take my hand, darling, take a chance You be my queen, I'll be your king Show you everything that you've been missing Shorty, so come on, come on Dance a little dance Got me in a trance and just one glance Oh, don't wait no more I'm me, I'm more I'm the one you're looking for, shorty